Okay, next we got Chapter 1, Maiden of Miracles. We get one new unit, Nolan. Nolan is a level 9 fighter with an Earth affinity. He will turn into a warrior and then a reaver. He starts out as a C in axes, and when he becomes a reaver, he becomes a C in bows. And I will cover this later in more detail, but when Nolan becomes a warrior, he will inexplicably be able to use crossbows. Nolan comes with the super skill known as Nihil. This skill allows you to nullify the skills of the enemy. And the only ones it doesn't nullify are ones that don't relate to battling, or skills like critical plus something. And in case you're wondering, units that both have Nihil do not cancel each other out. Nolan starts out with a Steel Axe, which is the third strongest metal, and a Vulnerary, which heals 20 HP, like I've already said. Nolan is known by many as one of the only three worthwhile Dawn Brigade units. Since he starts out at a pretty high level, and you're going to be using him a lot, he's going to level up pretty quickly. And his Steel Axe gives him an advantage over his enemies right from the start. When it's all said and done, he can easily turn into one of your best Axe users. He's going to have pretty high stats overall, but mainly HP. Speed is not going to be a problem for Nolan, and it should rival his high HP, actually. But if you're unlucky, he can get completely ruined in strength. By the time you get to the really important chapters, he can actually have pretty low defense. But like Edward, his speed can really make up for that. And his resistance really shouldn't be too low, unless you're really unlucky. And like I've said, resistance is the easiest weakness to cover up. Really, Nolan's biggest weakness is actually his defense, but uh, like I said, he's got really high HP, so that should really make up for that. And this may go without saying, but most physical units aren't going to really have a high magic rating. With Nolan's insanely high HP and pretty good supporting stats, Nolan gets my Bluetooth mark of recommendation. Now moving on to the chapter. First of all, it's got an Earth affinity, so Nolan has the imaginary home field advantage here. And this is good, because Nolan is almost guaranteed to be your MVP here, unless you really want another unit to be. You're gonna need to position Nolan right here so that he gets completely surrounded by the enemies, and they can't go past him. You can put Edward in this spot right next to it, but be warned, Edward can't take much punishment from these enemies. And even though he's got the weapon triangle advantage, really be careful, especially in hard mode. Actually, on easy mode, don't even worry about being careful. Just don't put Micaiah out in front. That's a really bad idea on any level. Now, on the first turn, they basically want you to send Leonardo over to that house over there to get the vulnerary. This introduces the concept of visiting. Visiting is recurrent in most Fire Emblem games. Basically, you go up to a place, click visit, and you get an item. And then the place closes so that no bandits can invade it. But if a bandit gets there first, they can destroy it, and you won't be able to get the item. And as you can see, that first house gives you a vulnerary as your item. The second house is guarded by a soldier wielding a javelin. That's that red dot right there. And as you can see, if you can beat the guy with the javelin, you get a hand axe for this. I recommend Nolan visiting this house, because he's the only one that can use a hand axe. And I recommend taking out all the enemies before Nolan visiting this, because then you'll basically leave all your other units wide open, especially Micaiah, because they always go after the weakest unit, and Micaiah's speed should be pretty low at this point. And of course her health. Now if you need to, you can position Edward out of the way so that you can get some indirect attacks from Micaiah or Leonardo if you want him. But I probably wouldn't move Edward too far back because then he won't be able to get into any of the fighting. And you're going to want to use Edward at least in Micaiah's story if you don't plan on using him in the rest of the game. Now Nolan getting that hand axe is in no way a necessity on any level really because um, the only indirect attacker is this archer that's out to the side, and you can almost ignore him if you stay out of his range. So really, visit the hand axe place with whoever you want, and then you can trade later. But basic strategy, have Nolan kill or weaken most of the units, maybe have Edward and the others finish him, or just have Nolan finish him if you really want to use Nolan. If you don't want to use Nolan, you still have to use Nolan here. But you should probably know that Nolan's not going to be doubling any of these first attackers, but he's got a better axe, so he's going to be doing a bit more damage. 
And because he's going to be attacked by two at once and three if Nolan kills him, then you're really going to want to keep Nolan healed, either by Micaiah's sacrifice, by putting Micaiah right behind him, or his vulnerary. Remember the consequences of killing a weakened enemy when there's another enemy that can get in and attack on the next turn? It's that they can come in and attack you on the next turn. And don't expect Nolan to actually be the dodging expert in this chapter. Now on hard mode, you're not going to be able to get through this entire mission being hit by every attack. You're going to need some luck to dodge some of the attacks. And you're not going to get through it with just Nolan like you can on easy or normal. And because of that, this stage gets my black tooth mark of impossibility. Okay, on to the boss, Isaiah. That's a play on words, I think, of I saw you. He's got a wind affinity. He's a Myrmidon. Level 7. Nolan has the advantage here. In level and affinity. Isaiah's advantage is, of course, the weapon triangle. But Isaiah doesn't have any healing items. Isaiah is the first boss that's going to have a skill, even though it's just critical plus 5. But always be wary about critical hits on hard mode. Because any time they can happen, they usually will happen. And in hard mode you can't save, so you'd have to do this entire mission over again. Now I forgot to mention this, but in easy mode your mission is just to take out the boss, and in hard and normal you have to escape in a certain number of turns. And that certain number happens to be 10 in this instance. Now there are only two escape missions, but here's how they work. There's this one space, or in this case two spaces, that are occupied by enemies, and you have to get your units to that space and they will leave. Now if you get your units before Micaiah to escape first, you will get a little more bonus experience than if you just have Micaiah escape, because once Micaiah escapes, you've won the mission. And you get a little more bonus experience for each unit that escapes. Now really what makes Isaiah a bit challenging is that he's got a co-boss. Now this co-boss isn't regarded as a boss or anything, but he's got an iron axe, he's standing next to him, and he's guarding the other escape space. So you have to defeat him or Isaiah. I recommend defeating Isaiah because you can see that little thing in the top left, steel sword. You get his steel sword for beating him. I really recommend defeating both, but if you can't defeat both, just defeat Isaiah. The other guy didn't do anything wrong, apparently. An annoying thing about this co-boss is that when you defeat him, or I think even attack him, it will cause Isaiah to move. If you attack Isaiah, the co-boss won't move. So I do recommend defeating Isaiah first, if you plan on defeating them both. And whether you believe it or not, Nolan is the best choice for attacking Isaiah, especially in hard mode when the weapon triangle doesn't apply. Now in a one-on-one -on -one fight, Edward will not be able to defeat Isaiah, so don't try it. But you can have Makai or Leonardo there to back up Nolan. And you can get Edward to attack the co-boss, I think that's okay. Just don't do anything too risky on hard mode. Because once about turn 8 or so, reinforcements will start to come, and don't try to take them all out. You won't be able to. Now like before, you will lose if an ally dies, but this time you will also lose if 10 turns pass. So time is a factor here. Well, I guess that wraps up this video. Give me a four-star rating. Tune in next time for Chapter 2.